Arnold Schwarzenegger was at the top of his game to kick off the 90s. He was just coming off of Terminator 2, which was the uh, biggest action movie of all time when it was released. And then he came across a script he'd considered to be one of the best that he had ever read. That script would be his next big movie, 1993's Last Action Hero. A wild and fun summer blockbuster that is now 30 years old, one that would also be a colossal failure at the box office, and a movie Arnold would describe as being the beginning to the end of his career, but I actually think this movie seems to age like a fine wine, so let's get into it. What's happening out there, guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel to check out this video. I'm Anthony DeJoya. This is Movies Never Say Die, your one-stop shop for retro reviews. If you do end up liking this review, drop it a like, consider hitting that subscribe button, and leave a comment to be part of the conversation. And today we're diving into the ins and outs of Last Action Hero, a movie that I've actually always really enjoyed watching growing up and one that I still have fun with as an adult. I think it's a fun tweener between being a full on parody like a loaded weapon and being a tried and true 80s and 90s action movie with a creative meta twist. Arnold gets more than enough comedic material here. The guy's dropping one liners left and right. He also gets uh, more than enough screen time as being a full blown action hero. His multi multiple roles are amusing and as he uh, buddies up with young movie geek Danny in the real world and in the action movie world I think you can sit back and just enjoy the creative ambition that this adventurous ride takes you on as Arnold seeks to avenge the death of his favorite second cousin. Now it's far from a perfect movie and not all the jokes or the ridiculous action works but I do think Last Action Hero is far better than people gave it credit for at the time and I really think the main problem for this movie was that it was just ahead of its time. Its production was also hastily rushed to meet a hard June 18th release date that Columbia Pictures refused to change, so the journey of Last Action Hero was a constant uphill battle. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you're gonna live to enjoy all the glorious fruits of life has to offer. Acne, shaving, premature ejaculation. The script for Last Action Hero was first written by Zach Penn and Adam Left. Originally titled Extremely Violent, it was uh, meant to be a parody on the typical action movie that many of us over 35 grew up on a steady diet of. They actually wrote it with Arnold in mind, and it was a much different film than the one that we see on the screen. Much more of their story was set in the film world, with a focus being on the cycle of our hero's hyper-violence and how it affected the people around him, with uh, no mention of a magical movie ticket. Penn and Leff actually spoofed a lot of Shane Black's Lethal Weapon, which was ironic when the studio would actually bring in Black to rewrite the entire script. Shane Black's script was much closer to the version that we see on the screen. From there, several script doctors were brought in to do uncredited revisions, among them being Carrie Fisher herself. Columbia Pictures early on had approached Schwarzenegger for the leading role, who at the time was uh, between this movie and a potential comedy called Sweet Tooth from director Penny Marshall. Now with Schwarzenegger in mind, Shane Black and David Arnott would revise the script to really dial up the action and per the request of Arnold, William Goldman was brought in to do a $1 million polish of the script to weave more depth to the characters and like that, Arnold was on board with Black and Arnott getting the screenwriting credits with Zach Penn and Adam Leff getting story credits. Schwarzenegger would also serve as executive producer for the first time on Last Action Hero, so he had approval of everything. Virtually every facet of filmmaking, including the script, the casting, the director, financing, distributing, budgeting, marketing, everything had to go through Arnold. Like I mentioned, he really loved this script, specifically the fact that it was rated PG-13 and could appeal to wider audiences, so it was clear that Arnold thought this movie would be his next Terminator 2. This film will be remembered that uh, you can do action, adventure, uh, and dramatic scenes like that, with chase scenes and blow-ups and, and special effects without really making it hard R rated and making it PG-13 so the kids can also go and see it, the whole family can go and see it. You don't need the explicit violence uh, in order to, to tell a story and to make a great movie. Sam Raimi, Richard Donner, and Robert Zemeckis were all in consideration for director, but Arnold's Predator collaborator and diehard director John McTiernan would take the chair behind the camera uh, for the 
young role of Danny Manigan, Elijah Wood was in consideration, but was ultimately deemed too young. Uh, funny enough, Schwarzenegger and McTiernan really did want Macaulay Culkin for the role, but of course, at that time, he was already busy working on The Nutcracker and The Good Son, both of which were also released in 1993. And there's no doubt that Culkin and Schwarzenegger would have been an interesting combo. Personally, though, I really do enjoy young Austin O'Brien in this role. He was an unknown. He was uh, more than able to capture that wide-eyed, cinema-loving energy of a kid who, like many of us, found escape inside the world of action movies. He was also great alongside Arnold, and I think their comedic timing and their rapport with one another is another undermentioned element to this movie that works very well to engage the audience. Last Action Hero, I think, also delivers a couple of capable villains for the needs of this movie. Tom Noonan is menacing, but safe as the Ripper, the main villain in the Jack Slater universe, much like I think Charles Dance is as Benedict. I think he gets a bad rap because uh, Alan Rickman was the first option for this role, but I think Dance is able to deliver plenty of charisma in this role to be equally villainous and cartoonish with a few great lines in his ever-changing glass eye. If God was a villain, he'd be me. Filming for Last Action Hero would take place mostly throughout California and in Manhattan. The filming would involve a seven-day, 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. closing of Times Square, which had to be a logistical nightmare. There was a 75-foot balloon of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Jack Slater wedged into the city that originally had Slater holding a few sticks of dynamite. But after the recent 1993 bombings of the World Trade Center, they were changed out to have Slater holding a badge. Production would last from November of 92 to April of 93, but it's been reported that filming was actually taking place up until just a few weeks before this movie would hit theaters, further cementing the notion of this movie's extremely rushed production. Last Action Hero would be billed as the next great summer action movie, and instead it was unfortunately the next great summer flop. Last Action Hero had an estimated $85 million budget, making it the most expensive movie of 1993, and that isn't even counting this movie's insanely expensive and failed marketing campaign that we'll get into here in a minute. But uh, when you think about it, this movie really seemed to have everything working in its favor to be a complete success. So what happened? No, like I said, this is a silly plot that may have come out a bit too early in Arnold's career, spoofing the genre cliches he was technically still using to be an action star may not have been to everybody's liking, but I also think it was the studio mandated release date that didn't really allow time for editing or tweaks after test screenings. And as for test screenings, Last Action Hero was so far behind on production, it only had time for one test screening on May 1st. It's been reported this test screening was an absolute disaster that ran two hours and 20 minutes with sections of inaudible dialogue, but with little more than a month till its release date and a feverish market marketing campaign underway, uh, there was barely time to complete the movie, let alone make impactful changes based on recommendations. So uh, with all of this considered, it's really not a surprise this movie didn't do so well. However, there was another factor in the summer of 1993 that I think certainly took a chomp out of sales. Hey! There just so happened to be another blockbuster that summer. Knowing Columbia Pictures were planning for a June 18th release date, Universal decided on a June 11th release date. Another PG-13 adventure was in play. It was a box office showdown between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Steven Spielberg's Dinosaurs and the dinosaurs won. Jurassic Park was like a Hoover vacuum sucking all the money out of the summer box office and Last Action Hero ended up like a lot of other films that summer as being collateral damage. Last Action Hero would open number two at the box office, coincidentally behind Jurassic Park in its second week with a $15.3 million opening weekend. It would keep itself in the top five at the box office for much of June and July, jostling for positions with Jurassic Park and Cliffhanger and 
Clint Eastwood's in the line of fire, but never able to get that number one spot. It was even knocked to the number three spot when Sleepless in Seattle would open at number two at the box office the week after Last Action Hero was released. The movie would finish with around $50 million in the States. Worldwide, it would bring in around $137.2 million. Not the numbers you want to see when you're the most expensive movie of the year, and even more so when Jurassic Park only had a $63 million budget compared to the $85 million one that this one had, not to mention the massive promotional campaign that I mentioned earlier. There was a line of action figures from Mattel that went into production, a reported $20 million Burger King promotion, an advertisement was placed on the side of a NASA rocket making Last Action Hero to be the first film ever to have a paid ad shot up into space, Arnold had ACDC write a song specifically for the movie, and there was another massive Jack Slater balloon placed on a barge out at the Cannes Film Festival, which I'm sure all the high society types just love, given that at the time of the fest, the movie wasn't even completed, nor was it a part of the festival schedule. He was just sort of there. Schwarzenegger reportedly did 40 television interviews and 54 imprint interviews for this movie in a 24-hour period. It could be an old wise tale, but it was said to be a personal record for Arnold, so whether it's true or not, there's no denying he was in full promo mode for this movie and hoped it would be a smash hit. But we don't always get what we want. Sadly, that wouldn't be the case for Lax Action Hero, which would report a $26 million loss. John McTiernan would retreat to his Wyoming home and take two years off before returning to direct Die Hard with a Vengeance in 95. Arnold would have an up and down 94, releasing the massive hit True Lies, as well as the massive flop Junior alongside his twins co-star Danny DeVito. So he had his ups and downs, but despite the poor financial returns, the negative reviews, and the audience at the time that were not really embracing an overtly self-aware Arnold Schwarzenegger, I contend that over the years, Last Action Hero has maintained itself as one of his better movies. It's wild and over the top, but that's the point of it all. I think Arnold embraces the humor and delivers it better than most action stars could. I think it's a very richly layered meta story that delivers a unique escape, and I think it's a bit sad that the ambition of this movie wasn't appreciated. I will admit it's about 15 to maybe even 25 minutes longer than it needed to be, and some of the slapstick theme moments come off as a tad too cheesy, but with wild action sequences that for the most part still look good, and all the amplified action movie tropes, the adventure of this movie is still a great time. It's filled with a ton of fun cameos with names like Chevy Chase and Damon Wayans and Tina Turner, Little Richard, uh, MC Hammer, Jim Belushi, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Sylvester Stallone, kinda, and so many others. It also has a couple of memorable meta cameos by Sharon Stone playing her basic instinct character and Robert Patrick playing a T-1000 that I think have sort of grown into lower tier, just iconic moments in 90s cinema. There are tons of intentional gaffes that sort of mock the genre as well. It's been said every scene in this movie has some sort of intentional gaff in it in an attempt to make the viewer feel like they are in the movie. Maybe this was just, I don't know, maybe it was all too much for audiences to take in at the time. But I think now that the uh, golden age of action movies really is behind us and we can reflect on the times with nostalgia, that Last Action Hero is much better than it was uh, generally perceived at the time. Last Action Hero was a movie that mocked the blockbuster action movie by being a blockbuster action movie and with so many others doing the same thing, I think some appreciation should be given to Last Action Hero for truly being one of a kind. It's an adventure that all ages can enjoy and it's the perfect role for Arnold who during his prime showed that his comedic ability was far superior to his competition in the action genre, so I'm going to give Last Action Hero a solid B. And that's it for today, guys. This has been my look back at Last Action Hero, a movie that's 30 years old this month and a movie that's potentially more fun today than it was when it hit theaters back in the summer of 1993. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this movie if you've seen it down in the comments below. And until the next video, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Shop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Live of war. You gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?